In this lecture, I will discuss how to measure temperature using a thermistor and a microcontroller. In the lab you will complete next week in class, you will be using a thermistor to measure temperature, and you will display what that temperature is on an LCD. This LCD will display the temperature in Fahrenheit based upon a circuit that we will create so that we can isolate the thermistor's resistance value and from there determine the temperature. This will require you to use repetitive analog to digital conversion and some math to back convert from the analog to digital conversion result into the temperature. So if you recall from your circuit analysis class, a thermistor is a temperature varying resistance. And so inside a thermistor, the resistance will change based upon the temperature that it is either submerged in, in the case of putting it in a hot or cold liquid, or just the ambient environment surrounding it. And a thermistor is governed by the equation that you see here, R equals R naught E to the beta times 1 over T minus 1 over T naught. And for our thermistor, R naught is 10 kilo ohm, T naught is 298 Kelvin, and in the circuit analysis class, you used a different thermistor that had a beta of 3903.7. The thermistor that you have in your possession has a beta of 3950. So make sure if you do reference any old notes that you have from circuit analysis as you're working on this lab, that you do use the updated beta value. It is important to note that all of the temperature values in this equation are in Kelvin. Now most of us are not used to reporting temperatures in Kelvin. Those are typically just used for scientific instruments. So we will convert to the familiar Fahrenheit scale for our lab. So what we can do to isolate the thermistor's resistance is insert it into a voltage divider circuit. Once we have it in the voltage divider circuit, we will have a known resistance and a known voltage in conjunction with our variable resistance. So a known voltage, known resistance, and a variable resistance. And based upon that, we know the output voltage equation for a voltage divider, and we can determine from there what our R2 value is, which will be the thermistor resistance. A good choice in constructing such a circuit is to try to match the resistance of the known resistor with the nominal thermistor resistance. In order to do this, we will use our old friend the voltage divider. If you took circuit analysis with me, which I'm not sure any of you did, but whenever I teach circuit analysis, I point out voltage dividers in almost every circuit. And so by the end of the course, I start referring to them as our old friend the voltage divider. And so if you look at a voltage divider circuit, we have an input voltage and we have two resistors and we can compute the output voltage. In this circuit, we will have a known VN. We're going to use five volts, which will be the VDD on your board. We will have a known R1. That is going to be the blue nominal 10 kilo ohm resistor that you have. And we have an unknown resistance. That is the thermistor. And so we can look at our voltage and realize that V out is going to equal the resistance of the thermistor divided by the sum of the resistance of the known resistor in the thermistor multiplied by this 5 volts. And so we can then split this apart into a proportion and say, okay, V out over V in is going to equal the resistance of the thermistor divided by the resistance of the thermistor plus the resistance of the known resistor. This also relates back to our analog to digital conversion result. And so our output voltage is going to be proportional to our input voltage the same way that our A to D result is going to be proportional to the maximum A to D result. And in fact, we're going to use one more than the maximum, 2 to the N, where we have N bits. And so in this case, this is the proportion that we are going to solve. Our full analog to digital conversion result divided by 2 to the n is going to equal the resistance of the thermistor divided by the resistance of the thermistor plus the known resistance. And you can back solve for this to isolate the resistance of the thermistor. And that is what you will do in the in-class exercise for this week. 
And so we're going to put a wire coming out from the node between our node and the thermistor and put that into one of the A to D channels. So where you see V out right here, this will go to one of our GPIO pins that will be configured as an analog input. So if we plug in resistance into the equation here for the thermistor, we can then solve for T. So if we know what our resistance is by back solving the previous equation given our analog to digital conversion value, we know what R0 is, we know what beta is, we can take a natural log to get rid of our exponent here, and we know what T0 is, we can isolate T. That will also be part of the worksheet that you're going to complete this week for your in-class exercise. Remember that T, once you solve for T in this equation, it will come out in kelvins. And so we will then go through the conversion from kelvins to Fahrenheit. So if you remember, if you take away 273.15 from a kelvin temperature, that gives you a Celsius temperature. And then if you take your Celsius temperature, multiply it by 1.8 and add 32 degrees, that is the Fahrenheit temperature. And so your formula will use the Fahrenheit temperature to output onto the LCD. In order to get rid of that E in our equation, you're going to use the natural log. You can use the natural log in C by using the function log. So it's not LN, it's just LOG. So the LOG function is log to the base E. You may see that in a math class as log to the base 10, but we're going to use that as log to the base E. In order to use that particular function, that is part of the math library. So you're going to have to include math.h. And that is one of those headers that is included in the XC8 compiler. And so you're going to put the less than and greater than surrounding that, not the double quotes. Just to review some of the things that we've been using throughout the last few weeks, integer division in C means that if you're dividing two integers, you truncate any fractional result. So as we've talked about in previous lectures, as you've done in previous labs, 3 divided by 2 is not going to give you 1.5. 3 divided by 2 is going to give you 1, because you can divide 3 by 2 exactly once with a remainder of 1. And so integer division is essentially long form uh, division where you have a quotient and a remainder. and we use that sometimes for our benefit and sometimes that's not so good. So if you wanted to carry out values all the way through equations, even though you have some things that are integers by their very nature, so the R0 value, the T0 value, the beta value, those are all integer values or <coughs> in this case. Um, and so you may want to use those as integers, but when you put them into the equation, it is important that you do some casting and use them as doubles so that you don't lose any of the values there. However, when we go back to display things, we may want to convert some values back into integers so that we can do some of our isolating of individual digits. And so if you want to keep a fractional portion, you either need to declare a variable as type double or you need to cast it to a double. So when we talk about casting, you can use the syntax that you see here. Um, so if you want a double made out of an integer, then this int value here, a variable named int value, if you just put parentheses double in front of here, this is now casting this integer as a double, and you can put that into a double variable. If you have an integer variable, you can likewise do this with my double. There will be some potential loss here as you lose some of your places after the decimal. And so that helps us to work between our data types. This is important because some functions will expect doubles, others will expect integers. And so as you are passing things to functions, you need to keep in mind, does this require an integer or does it require a floating point or double precision value? And so it will sometimes truncate and sometimes automatically do some casting when you call a function with a different type than what it is expecting. When we're talking about our arithmetic, if you take an integer variable and divide it by 5, that will perform integer division. You will lose any remainder. If you have my variable divided by 5.0, oh, 
Now that 5.0 tricks it into doing double division and you will not lose that precision and it will keep the fractional result, it, especially if my var is of type double. So that's a roundabout workabout way to get around this integer division if that's not what you want. So casting will be important in this lab assignment, particularly because throughout the process you want to keep all of your decimal places when you're calculating the temperature. You don't want to do any rounding, you don't want to have any loss. You want to keep all of those decimal places of precision all the way until the last computation when we will finally round to the nearest hundredth of a degree. And so if you multiply a value by 10 before casting that to an integer, that's a way to preserve the tenths place. If you multiply by 100 before casting, that's a way to preserve two places after the decimal with similar results. So multiplying by powers of 10 allows us to shift over things after the decimal. Then we can truncate them to integers to get rid of any extra places that we're not interested in. And then we can do our integer division math along with modulus to go ahead and isolate each of the digits that we're interested in printing out. And we will use similar methods to how we have printed previous results in earlier labs. So on the top line of the LCD, I want you to display the full result of the analog to digital conversion just like you've done in the accelerometer lab and in the um, A to D lab. And so this will be between 0 and 1023. And then I also want you to display the result in hexadecimal. So we will do a similar conversion process, but in this case, we will do divide by 16, and we will have a little bit of an if statement to offset some things. I'll talk about that when you get into lab. On the second line, I want you to display the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit to the nearest one hundredth of a degree. And you will also display the degree symbol and the units in Fahrenheit. In terms of sampling speed, the sampling speed is configured in the ADCON 1 register and since temperature typically does not change very rapidly, you're not going to see multiple changes in a second of a significant change in temperature, we are going to be able to sample rather slowly. So a slower sampling rate will allow us to reduce the energy consumed by the chip and allow us to sample at an appropriate rate. So here's the order of conversion. First of all, we need to configure our ports as inputs and outputs, analog and digital, using the appropriate TRIS and ANSEL registers. You're going to set up the ADCON1 to determine whether things are left or right justified, the boundary conditions in terms of our voltages, and also the sampling rate. Then you're going to configure your ADCON0. So we're back to, in this lab, just using a single channel. And remember not to say go at first because we don't want a race condition between setting up the channel that we want to sample from and having it go and execute the conversion on that channel. Then you're going to set the go bit. You're going to wait for the A to D to finish and you can either use an interrupt or you can use polling. And then we're going to compute the A to D result just as we had before using the A to D results registers, the ADRESH, ADRESL. And then we're going to display the A to D results on the top line and we're going to compute the temperature using the formula that you'll derive and be careful when you use that to use appropriate casting or truncation and then display the temperature out to uh, this has one decimal place I'm going to actually extend it and have you display it out to two decimal places on the LCD on the second line and be sure to include the degree symbol and units.